Hello and welcome to Manga Tora 96 and today we're going to talk about Mairimashita Iromakun. Today's focus will be on Iroma's family and by family I'm not referring to the pieces of shit that are related by blood to Iroma, but rather his true family that adopted him in the underworld. But before we start, there are spoilers in this video, so if you don't want to be spoiled, I would highly recommend that you check out the manga as it's really great and definitely worth reading. Now let's start with Grandpa Sullivan. Sullivan is the adoptive grandfather of Iroma and the principal of the Babelis Demon School. He is one of the three heroes, the most powerful and influential demons in society, and is a possible candidate for the new Demon King. Sullivan is mostly just a silly old man. He is consistently doting on Iroma. Sometimes the situation Iroma gets in because of him are embarrassing or even dangerous, but he never means any harm. Though he seems mostly happy-go-lucky, Sullivan's high standing is well earned. He has demonstrated his power and knowledge plenty of times, both as a principal and a grandfather. His insight and advice can prove to be very helpful at times. Despite his seemingly benevolent disposition, he does on occasion reveal a more menacing side to his personality, which startles whoever is around him. He was also ready to eat Irma if he refused to become his grandson. Very little about Sullivan past is known at this point, however it is known that he is one of only three demons alive, to have reached the rank of Yod, putting him in the position of possibly being able to inherit the throne as Demon King. A few hundred years ago, when the Demon King, the Rikala, was not missing, Sullivan was a subordinate serving the Rikala. The relationship of both seems very close. As for Sullivan's abilities, Sullivan has the ability to either slow time to a standstill or to stop time, as he had done it in the first episode of the anime so Irma doesn't get hurt and in the 19th episode which he stops the fireworks from falling into the school and changes the path to outside the school area. Lord Sullivan has also the ability to manipulate the weight or force of gravity on an object or individual through the use of the spell Fractal. As for his relationship with Iruma, a human child that Sullivan adopted as his grandson, out of loneliness and envy, Sullivan allowed himself to be summoned by a pair of humans in the human world, making a deal for Iruma in exchange for money. He is very affectionate and caring towards him, despite being different species, not blood related, and he also kidnapped him. He has a hard time refusing anything Iruma asks for, and often spoils him, pampers him and showers him in gifts. As for his relationship with Opera, Sullivan's right hand demon, a servant who also works as a secretary of sorts, Opera likely lives in the same house as Sullivan and Iruma, managing the laundry, cooking, time tabling, and transport for the two of them. They have a master-servant relationship, with Sullivan relying heavily on Opera's abilities and advice to keep him on track and away from distraction. Now moving on to Opera, yes he is a servant but nonetheless he is considered a part of the family. Also he has the desire for Iroma to become a great man slash demon so that in the future Opera could continue to serve Iroma as he now does to Sullivan. Opera is a servant working under Lord Sullivan and in liaison Iruma Suzuki. They are often seen preparing and escorting Iruma for school, assisting Lord Sullivan in his work. Opera's rank is currently unknown. Humorously, Opera was Caligo's senior during their tenure at Babelis as students and is the only person who Caligo genuinely seems to fear. Opera has a serious down-to-earth personality. They often act as a voice of reason for Lord Sullivan but are usually ignored. They are mostly reserved with their opinion, but will voice the occasional concern or cynical remark and will sometimes dispense helpful advice. Their interaction with Kalego reveals that they have a somewhat more mischievous and sadistic side not normally shown in their professional behavior, which was especially prominent when they were students at Babelis. Not much is known about Opera's life prior to the employment to Lord Sullivan, however, it is known that Opera attended and graduated from Babylon's Demon School several classes ahead of Kalego, whom they often teased and bullied. As for Opera's abilities, 
Opera has a great set of arms that are capable to eliminate targets with ease. They were able to destroy the hardest target without any problem and carrying a boulder to strike at the bowling game one point during the division party. Opera has a keen sense of eyesight as they seem able to shoot the middle of the target multiple times splitting their own arrows in half. Opera is shown to have the ability to maintain a quick movement in distances for a short period of time, as well as being able to jump from one place to another smoothly. Opera is even capable of doing this even if they are carrying so on with them. And lastly, Kalego. I know that Kalego technically isn't Irma's family, but he's Irma's familiar and teacher, so that's enough for me to include him in this video. Nabirus Kalego is one of the prestigious professors at Babelis Academy, a school in the demon world. He is the homeroom teacher of the abnormal class, one of Suzuki Irma's teachers, as well as Irma's familiar after being contracted to him which is unbeknownst to him due to Irma's true nature as a human. Kalego has a personality that is somewhat antagonistic in nature. He is dirty, snappy and has a very short temper. He often makes every student around him to keep quiet. He is also rather pessimistic when dealing with his students, giving very little encouragement. He holds a very strong dislike and detest towards people who are boisterous, brash and inconsiderate to others. A prime example of this is the headmaster's easygoing attitude, thus furthermore hating him because he had done actions like cutting back his pay or forcing Kalego to use a cute study guide to demonstrate to the students how to summon a familiar. He similarly holds those who he feels are troublemakers or have easygoing troublemaking go to at their pace personalities, such as disliking Clara immediately after meeting her and seeming to dislike the abnormal class whom he teaches. While not an overly cruel person, he is at best an unpleasant person to be with. When he strongly dislikes someone, while he won't go out of his way to make their life as miserable as possible, he is also not kind enough to help them when they are in trouble. He seems disengruntled to have to be the teacher for the abnormal class and doesn't seem to care for their safety. For example, when Sabnok ignores his warning during a race and heads to the direction where the guardian of the valley is, rather than to try to help him, he just sits back and erases Sabnok's name from his list of students, assuming he will die, saying it means less work for him. He similarly did the same to Irma when he couldn't find Irma through his demon cameras and simply assumed him dead rather than to try to find him. He is also sadistic, taking enjoyment when those he dislikes are embarrassed or put in unfavorable positions, such as when Irma and Sabnok are forced to kneel after they complete the race, he condescendingly laughs at them for their misfortune. Kalego can also be unreasonable. When he makes deals with someone while he won't outright break the rules or contract, he'll try to find loopholes in his favor or make unreasonable demands and requests. For example, he dislikes Irma as he is the headmaster's grandson and stated if Irma made one mistake during the familiar summoning exam, he would fall him. Similarly, when Irma demands a change of classroom for the abnormal class, as their class is next to the garbage disposal and their class is in horrible condition, he agrees on the condition that the abnormal class gets approval from the faculty in three days. When the abnormal class against all odds does manage to get all of the signatures, he corrects them stating he meant every employee of the school counts as faculty, not just the teachers. A dirty move that he claims he didn't elaborate on because they never asked but he lost as Iruma's kindness charmed the rest of the employees into giving their signatures. He is not a villain or an antagonist, her as he despite often loses his temper, never gives out cruel punishments or attempts to punish them for something they didn't do. Despite those negative qualities, he does show a mild ability to compromise. Although he did use an unfavorable loophole to try to reject the classroom change of the abnormal class. He told them he will at least try to fix their classroom in recognition of their hard work. He also has an odd friendship with fellow teacher Balam, who almost everyone else avoids due to his scary appearance. 
implying that while he is judgmental of others, he doesn't judge others based on appearance alone, though he does unfairly judge other people based on his own perceptive bias, such as towards Iruma. Despite this incriminating antagonistic personality, Kalego also known how to be terrified, which is a very contrast of his overall behavior. This example will be his attitude towards opera, his former upperclassmen when they went to the same school, and every time both are around Kalego's pride, and demeanor constantly change to whatever opera wishes for him to do or to be, much on his liking. Aside from distress from opera, Kalego has also shown a contrasting goodness of himself. He has a lot of integrity as a teacher, and even with his usual antics, as a teacher himself, he doesn't back down his responsibility and in truth he studies and learns about his students in great detail. In fact, Kalego himself wrote the school's guidebook for its teachers. He is also extremely attentive to his students, keeping individual notebooks full of observation for each of them and doing his best to give them each sinister praise and helpful feedback during his home visit. At times, some of his irritation towards his students seems to stem from concern or frustration at them not reaching their own potential. While some of his actions may seem harsh or spiteful, he generally always tries to impart a lesson whether or not it is a fair one. As for his relationship with Irma, Kalego holds a massive grudge against Irma for multiple reasons, causing a scene at the opening ceremony humiliating Kalego by summoning him as a familiar, being the grandson of his willful boss and just generally being an unpredictable troublemaker. Whether or not that is Irma's intention, despite this, some of Kalego's irritation seemed to come from a place of concern. He repeatedly warns Irma not to take it for granted that he can manage any crisis on his own and to rely more on the adults around him, namely Kalego himself. He even seems confused as to why Irma doesn't summon him as a familiar in dangerous situations, despite Kalego's own proclaiming that he would never truly be Irma's familiar. Irma in turn seems deeply touched whenever Kalego shows concern for him. During his home visit to the Salvin household, Kalego spoke his unbiased and honest opinion of Irma as a teacher, praising Irma's academic progress and saying that he believed that Iruma's will to overcome any challenge was his most precious talent. Iruma's actions during his wicked cycle hint at some latent resentment towards Kalego, as Momonoki's signature is the only one whose signature is obtained by underhanded means, namely stealing Kalego's personal diary and using it to exhort her. However, for the most part, he seems to respect Kalego as a teacher and appreciates him as an adult who cares and looks out for him. During the Harvest Festival, Irma hallucinated many of the people who he cares about, turning their backs on him for being human, including Kalego, which deeply upsets him. As for his relationship with Opera, Opera was Kalego's upperclassman in their school days at Babiles, and their antics seemed to have scarred Kalego for life. Opera still greatly enjoys humiliating Kalego at every opportunity, though they act as though he just affectionate ribbling and makes the dubious claim that they were very close in their school days. Kalego, on the other hand, avoids opera whenever possible, even going as far as using Iruma as a literal human shield during his home visit to the Sullivan house. Little is known about their school days, other than opera refers to themselves as Kalego's senpai who bangered him in school and made him carry all their bags. And lastly, as for his relationship with Sullivan, Kalego strongly dislikes Sullivan, who embodies all three traits that Kalego hates most, obnoxious, brash and inconsiderate of others. On top of this, Sullivan often seems to single out Kalego for fun, doing things like cutting his pay on a whim and creating annoyingly cutesy instructional tools just to force Kalego to use them in class. Salvin hiring Opera as his personal butler may also contribute to Kalego's grudge. In spite of Salvin's antics, he seems to appreciate Kalego's abilities as a teacher. 
naming him as interim headmaster when Sullivan was arrested and proudly declaring that he knew he had made the right choice to assign Calego to the misfit class as he showed off Calego's throughout notes on Iruma's progress. With this, I covered everything I wanted about those three were considered Iruma's family. And that will be all for this video. If you like this video, leave a like, leave your thoughts in the comments below or subscribe to the channel for more manga reviews and One Piece content. And until next time, take care.